It's finally time, we are going to talk about the RK2020. This is a handheld I was waiting for for a very long time now. Coming in this futuristic box, the RK2020 is maybe the best handheld you can buy in 2020 for playing retro emulation. It's completely something different if it comes to the build quality and also the OS that it's running on. So this handheld is completely designed for playing retro games. It has some quite some interesting specifications and also it has an IPS screen for the best experience. Even in, with this invasion of handhelds in 2020, I was very excited seeing something new. Okay, so let's do this quick unboxing together. Some handhelds come with cables, even a TV out cable. So very curious what are we going to get with the RK2020. So what you can see, it comes with a little piece of paper, not even a manual. Because here we have, an, an, let's say, a quick explanation how it works. Because we are missing out some buttons like a volume control. So you need to do this with certain combination of keys. We'll make a different review about this. Explain what you all can do with this device. And of course we have a Type-C nowadays for charging and data transfer. Mm -hmm. They are also giving you this little card really. I recommend get yourself a USB 3.0 because this is an old version. And if you need to transfer big files, it will take forever for loading up your files. The first impression I'm having with the RK2020, it feels a little bit light, but even if it's made fully out of plastic, it's quite sturdy. We're having a normal D-pad, an analog stick, and all the necessary buttons that we're going to need for playing old school and modern games. With the RK2020, I think this will be something completely different because this device is also running on AMU ALEC. Gives you way more options than, for example, Retro Game 350M. So let's talk about the D-pad and the analog stick at the left side. The D-pad, it feels quite sturdy, but I'm not a big fan of it already. The analog stick feels and looks a little bit cheap, but this is what we're going to get with a device like this. Okay, so I needed to test it out instantly, and what I did notice with the D-pad, it feels quite sturdy, my moves come out, but not that instant like I'm having with a D-pad, for example, with the LDK or with the Retro Game 350. It feels a little bit sturdy, too sturdy in my opinion, and when playing this game, I have a little bit of a handicap, as you can see over here. So I'm very tempted to grab through the joystick and play this way, simply because it is way more responsive in my opinion. And that is something that is a little bit of a bummer because I do like the system itself. But some moves I can't do them or I need to get used to the deep at big time. So that is something that is not good. For the deep at test I just wanted to play another game. And I already noticed that it doesn't respond that great. So I already grabbed the, the analog stick. But I personally really hate doing it because the analog stick is in a very awkward position. And it is not very comfortable to play for a very long time, in my opinion. So again, the D-pad, I did notice it's very flawed on the RK2020. It's not really horrible, but the LDK and the Retro Game 350 has a way better D-pad. With the right side, we're finding the A, B, X and Y. It feels a little bit loose. And here we're having the select and start that we're going to need. At the bottom, we're finding the CF card. And Reset button and a little space because there is only one little speaker over here. And I must say it goes quite loud. But I personally prefer to see two little speakers. On the top of the system we're finding four shoulder buttons, a USB connection, Type-C, an audio checkout and of course the on and off switch. That you need to hold a couple of seconds if you want to boot up the system. How comfortable is this handheld? I can already tell you it plays very nice and you can reach the four shoulder buttons very easily. So in general I really like how it feels and how it looks. For example the normal LDK there was a very big issue. What I really like about this handheld is the transparent casing that we're going to get. And you can see we're having here the 2600mAh lithium battery. That gives us some let's say 3-4 hours gameplay. It can be a little bit less or a little, little bit more depending what kind of games you play of course. Right. Time to remove and let's talk about some nerdy stuff. If you look at the specification, it's a quite powerful handheld. Comes with a ROG chip that is basically a quad core ARM Cortex A35 that's running on 1 to 3 gigahertz. The GPU is a Mali G300 Devlin, has 1 gigabyte of memory. And for example, what I really like that is the thing having 3.5 inch 320 by 480 IPS display. I think it's pretty cool that they use a 3.5 inch IPS display. As you can see the view angle is perfect and the colors are so good with this display. 
So okay, but we're knowing that the handheld itself is pretty cool. Nice display, it got some decent sound, or better, it got quite some good sound. But what I think is pretty cool is the support of games. This is where the RK2020 will defeat every single handheld nowadays. Simply because this thing supports basically every single system you can think of. From the old school Atari up to PSP, it's possible to add this to the system and play your favorite games on the go. And this is something that is just completely new and different. It also has support for different applications. It also has support for, let's say, homebrew stuff. So nevertheless, it gives you a lot of freedom to configure and to do whatever you want with it. And this is just what I think that's the RK2020 makes it just a supreme handheld in this year, in this freaking invasion. But already we're going to do some gameplay testing simply because I want to see and want to show you what are we going to get with the RK2020. Even if it supports so many platforms, it is not said that it will have the perfect emulation for every single system. I will test out most of them that are very demanding and that are more like the challenge for this system. Because if it can handle the high-end stuff like Dreamcast PSP, it will also run the low-end stuff. But I think it's safe to say that the RK2020 is one of the best handhelds in 2020 and maybe also in the future, but that is something we need to see with the next invasion of handhelds. But still, I really like the shell itself, it looks really cool, it got a very nice IPS display, but the emulation is not perfect at all. When it came to the N64 emulation, it was pretty poor and had a lot of slowdowns. Maybe this can be improved with different emulators that are running on the background, but at the end it will always be a little bit of a problem with N64. But PlayStation 1 runs like a charm, but it is not something I was waiting for because I have a lot of handhelds nowadays that run PlayStation fine. I was very surprised seeing this game run on 30 FPS stable. Of course, don't get me wrong, it depends a little bit what kind of game you're playing because not all the games will run perfectly. What really most surprises me that the Sega Dreamcast runs the games very well and didn't notice, let's say, big slowdowns or any big problems. I did struggle a little bit with the D-pad because I can get used to this thing so I'm not a big fan of it and analog stick don't get me even started on because I am not a big fan of these tiny analog sticks and it is not in the perfect position. 
Besides the minor flaws, I really like this handheld and I still think this is one of the best handhelds you can get. So yeah, let me know what you think of this. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing to the channel and hit the little bell because I will see you in the next video.